Well, the history of music helps move me in, into the future. So I've spent my life studying the history, but my goal has always been to move myself and my music into the future. And so my philosophy has always been a solid, solid foundation on the history so that I am able to move myself into the future. And I've Consequently, I'm always looking for new ideas and new things to explore that will expand my musical vocabulary. Well, that's a good question. I'm not, I'm not really sure where music is going. Um, I, mainly, I pay attention to where my music is going and developing a unique voice as I move ahead into my, um, the, the process of my music. And at the same time, I'm always, or from time to time, in between my intense working periods, I'm looking and listening to what's going on. And I think what seems to be happening in music right now is that the borders between styles and genres are becoming less clear and mixing more and more. And this is something that interests me very much, and that's something that I'm doing in my music as well. Well, I get my inspiration from a variety of places. Um, it's often other musicians, other compositions, other composers. Sometimes it's nature, often it's nature, actually. Sometimes vis visual artists. Um, and the piece that I just finished composing is a piece for woodwind quintet, and I call it the Olympic Quintet, where I received my in inspiration from watching the Olympics. And this was very inspiring for me. It's always inspiring for me to watch great athletes. And I took the metaphor of what the athletes were doing in the Olympics and transferred that into my music. Well, I'm always concerned with the audience. See, being a performing artist, uh, we need, I think, we need this uh, energy exchange. That's what helps us move. Without that energy exchange, it's really difficult to, um, to keep moving without getting um, frustrated. And so in my work, I'm always, I always have the audience in mind, and I literally in my imagination, I put them, put the audience in the room with me, and so that I'm always performing for the audience. But the other thing I do as part of that is I put myself in the audience as well, so that I'm observing myself as an audience member, as well as performing or composing and working on my music. Through my work, through my studies, and through my teaching, I realized that what we are focusing on and the fact of being focused is really the most important thing in order to be efficient and effective in whatever we're doing. So it's not just about music, it, this is about life. And I found that with myself, when I make a mistake or I find myself not to be productive and I look at what's going on in the moment, I see that my focus has drifted. 
and consequently, I'm spending, a, I'm uh, watching where my focus is, I'm paying attention to what I'm thinking about so that, that I do notice when my focus has drifted so that I can bring it back to what I call the task of the moment. And when I'm in that focus, then I'm working in a very uh, effective way. As a composer, we're more or less obligated, especially if you're composing for larger ensembles, you're obligated, especially early in your career, to conduct and rehearse the ensemble that you're composing for or have composed for. And through that experience, I realized that I had a certain gift for conducting, and consequently, I started studying it and getting more and more into it, um, because, and I really enjoyed it as well. And also, in my career, uh, I think I mentioned earlier that I'm good at paying attention. So in my career, I've always paid attention to conductors and how they rehearse ensembles and run and, and put the pieces together and get the best performance. And so through my paying attention and really studying different conductors, I was able to develop my own techniques by seeing what's really working, what's not working, what the musicians appreciate, what they don't really need, and consequently my conducting became better and better just because of my studies sitting in different situations, orchestras, pit orchestras, uh, recording studios, and all the different uh, situations that a trombone player finds themselves in. It's not really my definition. This, I think, is a common definition of improvisation. I think most people will agree that improvising, not just in music, but I think in any situation, improvising is composing in the moment. And I realized that in order to really become a high-level improviser, the best way to do that is to study composition. Consequently, as a composer, often I find my, myself improvising in the composition. The composition is usually a combination of construction and improvisation. And when we're improvising and we all, we're doing it in the moment, then there's maybe less construction, although construction exists, but more improvisation using compositional devices or using the mentality of a composer. So I was always interested in being an improvising composer, as well as a composing improviser. <laughs> ¶¶